that I think that's one of the reasons that it's so addictive and intrinsically motivating is that moment of brilliance, however it materializes, can happen at any moment. And it's not necessarily linked directly to skill. That first song that I ever heard from you, I was like, she gets it. Like, there's something about this that's like, just very authentic. We've talked about that on the podcast a bunch. You have to be authentic, but just like, yeah, did that just come super naturally to use? It's something that when you started making music, you were intentionally like, I don't want to make what everyone else is making. Or was it just more like it came out? Yeah. So it's funny you bring that up because like circling back around to like when I started all this and like another reason I think I never really got into it. If you would have asked me two and a half, three years ago, if I was a creative person, I would say absolutely not. Like I always believed I was like the furthest thing, you know, from a creative person. I was always good at math, enjoyed science. So I was like, oh, like I enjoy like math and science. So therefore I can't be creative. Like, which sounds so Spoken silly now. like a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> music producer is the perfect Venn diagram of those two things. It's yeah. like, yeah. oh, now it's time to engineer. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, it's like, I never realized that creativity was something you could learn and like work to be creative. I thought it was just like, oh, mm-hmm. they're, you know, good at art. They're born, you know, that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it... I don't know. I mean, I definitely had in my mind, like, I don't want to sound, you know, like, um, what's already out there, but I don't think I was necessarily like actively trying to do that. Um, cause like my, my best stuff comes out when I just like, don't think about it when I'm just like, totally get in that flow state. And I just like, uh, that's been on my mind more lately, just trying to do like the opposite of what I would normally do or like, messing with random parameters just to see what happens or like one of my new favorite things is just like dragging a clip to somewhere where it shouldn't go and seeing how that sounds and just like the more I do stuff like that the more easy it is for me to get in that flow state and then yeah I wish I had a better like (laughs) more descriptive answer for it's it's one of those things it's like people just assume like you said like before you tried music production you just assumed that it was like this person's genius is imprinted directly into the music that they make. Mm -hmm. And one of the most beautiful things about electronic music, it's like, it's not just you imprinting onto the computer as much as like, that's the preconceived notion that everyone has when you start out like, Oh, this song in my head is going to become the song on the computer. It's way more like fuck around and find out. You know, it's like you just try stuff, see what it sounds like. And you let your taste dictate the result. Would, it would, like, that's why when people are like, oh, man, like, I don't think I could do that. Or like, I'm always like the biggest thing. You just have to get out of your own way, assuming that you can't. Because electronic music is one of the most beautifully experimental two-way processes that anyone can try And anyone can make stuff that they think is cool because it's so easy to just like experiment. And then it's, it's there. Once it's in the computer, it's there. It's not like you have to play the solo on the guitar and then play it another hundred times like live. Like, no, that's that cool thing that you accidentally did is now there. It exists and it sounds that way. And you can now use that throughout your whole song. And it's just like so much more. It's, Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons that it's so addictive and intrinsically motivating is that moment of brilliance, however it materializes, can happen at any moment. And it's not necessarily linked directly to skill. Like Mm -hmm. skill increases the chances of that brilliant moment happening, but it's not directly related, um, which is just like going to the casino. The creative casino is you can get better at it. But still, we're all just like fiending for that one little mud pie accident that's going to change the course of the whole track. You and just that's... get better at counting cards. That's it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's counting cards is essentially mud pies. That's, yeah. that's like the equivalent. And, and, and like you said, in electronic music, as soon as the sound is made and you have it printed in audio, it's there now forever and you can do whatever you want with it. 
And that's the crazy thing about this style of music is you get one little accident. You could be 40 hours deep in a song. You think you're at the end in the mix down. You get one little cool bit and you're like, holy shit, that's that's the bit. It took you 40 hours to get there, but that whole bit maybe changes the way you rewrite that first drop or or the outro of that song. And it ends up becoming like the fucking thing. So that's huge, man. I feel like that doesn't really, that concept doesn't lend itself to like maybe improv genres, but not in the same way. Cause it's not saved. Yeah. Evan, something you said there too, um, was a big like turning point breakthrough for me early on when I started thinking of it more as like, Oh, just play around until something catches my ear, then go with it mm-hmm. versus like, Oh, I have to like write and arrange this whole track looking at a blank slate where do I even start like that was one of the one of the many things early on that like really helped me get out of my own head out of my own way and it's like oh this actually like I don't have to make it super complicated just like mess around an idea will appear sometimes it's like 30 minutes and sometimes it takes like two three four hours but Yeah. (laughs) yeah I love that my favorite is when you so you start in the idea phase and you're just making a bunch of ideas, 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 ideas. And then five hours in, you realize that the first idea you made that you're like, let's see if I could make something better. And so you replay like all the 20 ideas you have sitting there and you're like, Hmm, uh, first thing I made after five minutes, I probably should have just rolled with that. Cause now it's 8 PM and, uh, uh, yeah. But it's really nice when you have all those intro ideas and you get like way later in the song and you're like, oh, I need more shit. What do I need? And then you're like, oh, I have like 10 stems right there of stuff I did not use at all. And then it's like it's like gaining the three mushrooms in Mario Kart. You just fucking zooms you. <laughs> I like it. What's up, humans? It's Luke, your friendly neighborhood trap Jesus. Thanks so much for watching the podcast, checking out our videos. We truly appreciate you. So, Rip Kenny, Tesco, and myself got you a gift. We made you a free sample pack. It's got basses, it's got effects, it's got crazy percussion and foley sounds, and it's free. It's all yours. Just click the link in the description below. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe, hit that like button, And share this with your friends. We appreciate you. Peace out and peace among worlds.